much for that introduction. I'm just going to share my slides. Okay, I'm delighted to be able to join you from here in the northeast of England in Teesside um, to talk about my research, which I have been collaborating on with UBC um, in Vancouver. And before I begin, I'd just like to acknowledge the fantastic support that we've had for this project from the Department for Science, Innovation and Technology here in the UK, and also the support that I've received from the British Consulate in Vancouver. And we're also really looking forward to the next phase of this project, which will involve working with ASU. So what have we been doing? Well, Feeling Planet is a project through which we have been learning from one another and sharing resources to define a climate emotions focused framework and toolkit for meaningful change. That is a way to engage people in technology focused projects. And before I go any further, I'd just like to point you towards our website, feelingplanet.org, where you can download a much more comprehensive project report. I'm going to try and take you through some key points in the next 10 minutes, but if you're interested, please do go to the website and have a look at the report. And also watch out for the practical toolkit that we hope to be launching in the autumn, which will give people resources to use some of these ideas in their work. So one of the reasons that I was so excited to work with Walter and his team on this collaborative project is because actually our two regions have a lot of synergies and a lot of things in common, not only in terms of the infrastructure and the technology and this unique opportunity that we have to use net zero technology to drive regional economic development either side of the Atlantic, but also perhaps most importantly for me, um, the opportunity to look at the very specific complex socioeconomic challenges that each region has. And we've been able to do that through the lens of this project and explore some of the ways that we can work together for equity and social justice. So why focus on climate emotions? Well, many of you will be aware that um, in 2021, there was a study of 10,000 young people in 10 countries in which more than 45% of participants said that their feelings about climate change negatively affect their daily lives. So that's very sobering. And that was in 2021. But perhaps more pertinent to all of you here today, um, I'd like to share this quote with you, which is from um, a key stakeholder that we worked with very early on in the project. And what they shared with us is the following. What I'd really like is a way of knowing how scary this technology feels for other people. My team can do all the modeling and the sighting analysis, but at the end of the day, we don't have a scariometer or an uncertainty meter. Right now, we don't have any way of knowing when we will have reduced uncertainty sufficiently for people to be comfortable with the risks, because there are always risks with everything, and there's a massive risk if we do nothing. So I think this just beautifully sums up the challenge ahead of all of you. You will know this challenge far better than I do, which is that it really doesn't matter how fantastic your projects are and this extraordinary technology that I know that you are creating. None of that matters if you can't bring people with you and if you can't enable them to embrace and adopt that technology. So this is why looking at climate emotions is so important. So what we've been doing is um, reviewing the resources. We did a scoping review of the literature and the resources in this area. And then we've been working with key stakeholders on developing the framework on either side of the Atlantic, both through workshops and one-to-one -one conversations. The one-to-one -one work was really important because it's not always easy for people to talk about these things in group settings. And we've come up with this framework which has three very simple dimensions which belie a lot of complexity. So first of all, acknowledging and expressing feelings, cultivating belonging, community and dialogue, and then taking action with this emotions informed approach. And I'm just going to take you through a few key points that I think might be particularly interesting to you. So when we think about acknowledging difficult emotions, it's not always easy to do very difficult sometimes. 
But the research tells us that helping people to name and differentiate in a more granular way between the emotions that they're experiencing inside their bodies can actually help them to process these emotions and it can protect us against anxiety and overwhelm. So our toolkit is aiming to help people to find ways to do that together. And then cultivating positive climate emotions is very important. This idea of cultivating hope, because we don't really understand fully the connections yet between emotions and behavioral change, but we suspect that positive emotions may be even more powerful in terms of motivating behaviors. And this is just a peek inside our toolkit. So you see over here on one side, we have all of these beautiful words about emotions. But one of the biggest challenges that we have in working with climate emotions is that these emotions are relatively new for us as human beings. So we don't necessarily have words and vocabulary to talk about them. And I'll give you an example. So if you think about watching a group of children splashing through a water fountain and the delight that they're taking in that, you're probably experiencing that delight and that pleasure too. But at the same time, you might be thinking about water shortage in your area, or you might be enjoying the sensation of the sun on your face on a, a warm spring day. And at the same time, you're thinking, actually, it's unseasonably warm. And you might be thinking about the risk of forest fires. So these climate emotions are multi-layered and complex and very difficult for us to articulate. And we're trying to look for ways of helping people to do that. We're inventing new language in a sense. And of course, one of the themes that emerged very strongly from the research is that climate emotions don't only affect the public. We tend to talk when we talk about engagement in terms of engaging the communities and the publics that we work with. But of course, we all have emotions. And all of you, whether you're working in tech development or in policy or in education, in research, you are also motivated by your emotions, whether that is consciously or not. So it's really important for us to find ways to surface that and to work together on how we can use all of our emotions to harness change. Cultivating a sense of connection, belonging and community. This is really important and it's not just about sharing language it's also about asking who is missing from these conversations and communities who is not here and how we can invite them in very early on in a project design so that they can that, that sort of sense of togetherness and belonging can be embedded into the project from an early stage and it's not just about connecting with one another either we also need to connect with place. When you think about it, many of you will be motivated by your relationship with place. That could be one of the reasons that you're doing this work in the first place. And it's important, we know, to give people the opportunity to reconnect with that sense of place. Um, it's very important for your mental health and it's also important in terms of honouring place and finding effective ways to design these projects. So I think the thing that I really want to share with you is that when I began this work, I had no idea just how powerful it could be. As Walter mentioned, I am a writer. I have been facilitating um, creative workshops for perhaps 30 years now. And I was really moved by so many of the stories that people shared with me during this project. So what that tells me is that we really need to find ways to look after our mental health, to manage stress, to build resilience and cultivate this hope. I think that all of you here today, probably not very used to anybody asking you how you feel about what you do and how you feel about the future. And this is really important. So I'd like to leave you, if I may, with an invitation, which is that as you move through the day and as you move through this conference, just to take some time to ask yourself, how am I feeling? Just to check in with yourself about that. And as you're listening to a presentation, as you're listening to a conversation, just noticing how that lands in your body and how it makes you feel. And then turning to your colleague, turning to other people and asking them how that, how that makes them feel too, not just what they think, but how they feel about something. And continuing to ask this question, who isn't here? 
whose voices may be missing? How can we invite them in? So thank you so much for listening. This is feelingplanet.org. Please do download the report if you're interested in learning more. And here is my email address. If you have any questions, I'd love to connect with you. Thank you. Thank you.